الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبت في الله continuing on in our treaties our study of advice to the youth of Ahl Sunnah by Sheikh Sultan Al Eid حفظه الله تعالى we left off where the Sheikh was uh, explaining the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem وَتَعَوْنَ لَبِرُ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوْنَ لَلْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيلُ الْقَابِ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem Cooperate in piety and righteousness And do not cooperate in sin and transgression And fear Allah Indeed, Allah is severe in penalty The Sheikh said, Hafid Allah ta'ala we should cooperate amongst ourselves as the people now are waiting for this da'wah. And you can see that the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, all praise due to Allah, has spread amongst all peoples. Walhamdulillah, well, look at this. We're from America and we're trying to call the Kitab al Sunnah. We have many of our brothers in the UK as well, calling the Kitab al Sunnah. Many of our brothers in France, calling the Kitab al Sunnah. Many of the brothers, of course, in Saudi and many, uh, and, uh, many of the uh, Muslim lands in Yemen and Libya and Europe and in, in Belgium and Germany Ahlul Sunnah Mawjood Ahlul Sunnah is, is just about everywhere you have Chinese brothers from Ahlul Sunnah Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen al ikhwanana fi Somal in Somalia Ethiopia wherever I know Salafis Walillah Alham from all, almost everywhere all over the world, alhamdulillah, and we'll have them in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is going to spread his deen. Allah is going to spread the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah with or without us, with or without us. So we need to be cooperating so it's with us, so we can get the edger of it and that we're not a part of deterring people from the da'wah, running people away from the da'wah, but instead we want to encourage people to come to Kitab wa Sunnah, not to come to ourselves, not to come to us. I don't care, I don't care if you call yourself Salafi. That's between you and your and your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what's important is is that you adhere to the Madhab so That's what I do care about. I adhere I uh, hope and want for every Muslim to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, based on the Salaf of this Ummah. The Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is what this is what is matloob. This is what this is what uh, is needed and what is want wanted and hoped for. The Sheikh then said, the people love the da'wah and it is possible that we can be of those who support this da'wah and convey Allah's deen and invoke Allah to aid it and safeguard it to the utmost so that we are not of those who destroy it. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, this is just what we said and this is Min fadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala The tawfiq that we see That many of our ulama And our du'at And our uh, tulab al-ilm That they're, they're trying to call They want to see this, this khayr go forward They want to see the da'wah go forward And they're saying the same things They're saying the same things Yes, from the people Are those who merely set out to destroy Via namima Qil wa qal Ifsad, causing corruption and speaking a lot about this one and this one and caring about this one. Here's a new video about this one. We just refuted so-and-so. We just refuted her. We just refuted him. You know, spreading sometimes lies, spreading falsehood. And this is what is madhmoom. This is what is not permissible in Islam. But it's permissible to spread the haq if you see someone uh, from Ahl Bidah. Then we refute their, uh, we refute them, and we don't uh, preserve their honor. And if you see someone from Ahlul Sunnah making this mistake, and this is something we benefited from Sheikh uh, Sheikh Ubaid Jabri, Hafidullah Taala, in his explanation of Shara Sunnah, he mentions this very uh, detailed uh, about the importance of the categories of people, explaining where Imam Barbahari explained about the uh, the person who is on the path, but then they make a mistake. You know, and there are two types. So Sheikh, Sheikh Abed Ajabri Hafidullah Ta'ala was explaining this in detail, letting us know that of these two types, there are those from Ahl Sunnah. Those from Ahl Sunnah who make mistakes, but yet we maintain their honor. We don't belittle them, but we refute their mistake. They have to be corrected, and we have to make sure their mistake does not spread. That is from the deen. But to go beyond the bounds and strive every to listen to every tape of, of, of all your brothers looking for a, a, a statement, looking for a mistake in his speech, looking for one time he slipped in his tongue or in his writing or whatever. 
to destroy him, to belittle him. This is what is, is not permissible. This is what the ulama discourage. I don't know any of the mashaykh. Even some of the mashaykh that are stronger, have a stronger mokif, that have tend to be stern on ahl bidah and about these matters. Even they, I don't see this from them. I don't see them going through and, and, and striving to belittle other people from ahl sunnah and looking for any word that they mistake, they, they made as a mistake. And then spreading it like that. I don't see that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success and forgive us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The Shaykh said, Hafadullah Ta'ala, Yes, from the people there are those who merely set out to destroy via Namima. So there's some people, they just want to backbite. And they just want to carry tales from Ala uh, Wajil Ifsad. Meaning, like the Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, when he went by the graves, Marr Nabi وسلم, ala kabreen, فقال, The Prophet وسلم, was walking by some graves, and the people were being punished in the graves. And he said, verily they're being punished and they're not being punished for something which is big. As for one of them, he didn't make proper stinja or he didn't clean himself properly when he was urinating. As for the second one, he used to carry tales, namima. He used to say things about the people in order to spread evil. So if you find delight in your heart saying, man, so-and-so is off it. Man, did you hear about so-and-so? Da-da-da-da-da-da. You know, and your, your, your intent is to spread evil. You better watch out because you've fallen into new mima. And it's very danger, dangerous. It's khatir jiddan jiddan. Ahabatifillah. Avoid this. And again, that goes back to the niyyah, inna ma'amala bin niyyah, that we have to have, our actions are tied to intentions. If you are sharing something in order to advise your brother and sister, this is khair. This is like commanding the good and forbidding the evil. But if you're trying to spread evil in order to spread it around because you want more fitna in this masjid and more fitna in this community and more fitna between these communities, then you need to check yourself in your intention and go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. The Shaykh Lina said, he says, yes, from the people are those who merely set out to destroy the Namima, Qil Waqal, if sad, causing corruption, writing things on the internet, tarnishing the reputation of Ahl Sunnah, and entering matters which they do not adequately understand. We have to stop there. The Shaykh said, Ta'ala, he said, tarnishing the reputation of Ahl Sunnah, and entering matters which they do not adequately understand. How many people who aren't even students of knowledge, and some of them beginning students of knowledge, entering into affairs of the ulama. Akhi, Sheikh so-and-so rudded Sheikh Ibrahim. Why do you do, why, why do you quote from him? Uh, Sheikh so-and-so said this, we need to get in the fitna between Hajuri. We need to mention this. And you don't even know Arabic. You don't even take from any of those ulama because you don't know the language. This is a mushkila kabira, ikhwan. This is a fitna kabira that we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid those matters. And, and a beautiful thing that was translated recently and it's Kalam from Alama Muhammad Aman Jami, uh, where he said, and he was talking about those people, about the youth not getting into uh, the, the fitna between the ulama. The youth, they don't have a place in that. The students of knowledge don't even really have a place in that unless they're well grounded. And even in that, they shouldn't be spreading fitna. It's not about spreading fitna, it's about spreading khair. Anytime you, re if you ref refute Ahl Bidah, if you refute ahl someone from Ahl Sunnah, their mistakes, it's about spreading khair. Your intention has to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to be as a wudj, uh, uh, an act of ibadah, that you're making ibadah, not that you're raising yourself up. You don't want to refute him because he was getting so popular, you wanted to see him fall down. You don't want to refute this one because you think that it's going to make you more popular. You're going to get more views and you're going to get more, uh, people are going to like you and you're going to be accepted by this group of brothers because you refuted so and so. That's not the reason. And may Allah forgive us and bless us with tawfiq and a class with the battle of sunnah. The Shaykh then said, Hafizullah Ta'ala. So he said, uh, all of this also leads on to what I advise, which is that a Sunni youth should not get involved in that which he does not understand and not indulge in major issues as these issues should be left to the senior scholars. Kathra to ulama, they make the same advice. Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam has a lot of kalam about this. Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh Nashik Ibrahim. And they bring many quotes from the ulama of the past. Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Sheikh Salim ibn Fuzan has beautiful kalam. Alama, Imam ibn Fuzan. 
he speaks about this. Why are we getting it? Why are we still involved young people who don't know much about the deen talking to get involved in affairs of Tibdi? Why are they making tikfir and Tibdi of people? This one is a kafir. This one is a mubtadiyah. This one is this. This one is this. And they don't know the, the usul. They don't know the kawai. They don't know what to heed half of them. And they definitely don't know the kawai and the wabit of tikfir. You know, the, the, the principles and the criterion for takfir and those things which prohibit making takfir. And likewise, those things which are the criterion for making tabdiyya. A lot of people don't know this. So why are they involved in these things? May Allah help us and guide us and forgive us in them, I mean. If any argumentation, dispute or discussion occurs between two scholars or two people from Ahl Sunnah, my brother, do not get involved. Allah has not obligated that upon you. Why are you even getting involved? Did Allah instruct you to get involved? Allah has not instructed you to get involved. It is enough for you to learn that which will benefit you, as such as the ahkam of salah, the rulings of salat, ibadah, worship, ahkam of mu'amalat, the uh, rulings pertinent to the other acts, uh, actions of fiqh in, in mu'amalat, and creedal issues, meaning those things which relate to tawheed and creed and aqidah. Now you may not even have studied any creed books. Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdurrahman Ibn Qasim read al aqidah to Wasatiyah with the former Mufti of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn, Ibr uh, Ibn Ibrahim, eight times over. Each time he wrote a complete explanation. He then published these eight explanations in one compilation entitled Shar al aqidah to Wasatiyah li Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim and it is of the best explanations of this creed. Rather, it is the best explanation of this creed in my humble view. So my brother, leave entering into these issues among the scholars and do not preoccupy yourself with this so that you can relax, feel assured and give concern to that which Allah has instructed you with. Allah has instructed you to worship Him, pray the night prayer, to remember Him with tasbih and tahlil. And if you were to preoccupy, pre preoccupy yourself with things which you do not adequately understand, shaitan will start to confuse you and in the end will deviate you from the way of the blessed Salafi Dawah. I want to mention something here because we've seen it. With the years of experience of dealing with many, meeting many students of knowledge from all over the world and seeing many trends and many things happen. We've seen many situations. I've seen brothers who were so extreme at one point. Then their sheikh their sheikh went down, and some of them, if they didn't leave Islam altogether, they went to the other extreme, Mutasahal, Jiddan, where they just accept everything. No more bid'ah. You know, we, we won't talk about those issues. We're only going to talk about uh, 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 certain matters. But we're not going to talk about bid'ah. We're not going to refute anyone. We're not going to refute any mistakes that we see. And this is extremism as well, Ahabatullah. This is as some of the ulama say, Mumayya. They say that you know it's a it's a throwing away and watering down and belittling the principles of Ahl Sunnah. So this is these are real situations that happen. And then some they've just become sterner and harsher over the years. Without you you wonder where their fiqh and their understanding is coming from. Because it doesn't seem like they're following the path of the ulama. Because we don't see that from the ulama. We see a lot of uh, the, the wisdom, the hikmah. Especially from the major scholars. And that's why we have to tamasik be him. Ahabatifillah. The shaitan will confuse you. Because how many people have we seen that have been confused? Either from going one extreme to the other. Or they became confused because they just don't know anymore. It just makes your head spin because one minute you're taken from this person and then you see that ten brothers have refuted him the next day. And so he's off it. And then the next brother. And then and it goes so much that you just wonder who, who's left from Ahl Sunnah. Because you see that everyone, everyone is being taken out. Sheikh so-and-so was well known for the Sunnah in such and such country. Khalas, no more. So-and-so, this. And they belittle him. He's not a student of Sheikh so-and-so. He's this one, this one. We have to be careful. It will make your head spin. But what's important is to keep going back to those books of the Salaf to keep yourself grounded and balanced.
I hope that the Lord Sheikh then mentioned, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, you will begin to pre preoccupy yourself with matters which are not of the caliber to indulge in. Do not get involved in such issues. This is my advice to the youth. If you do not get involved, entrust the matter to the ulama. You will be relaxed and cooperate. Leave it to the ulama. But if you get involved in such major issues, there will be differing, argumentation, and, dis uh, and disputing, which even reaches the level of tabdi. For what? How many people, because of one individual, they make tabdi of their brothers and sisters. They boycott them. No, nothing to do with the duwabit of hajj or anything. They say, oh my gosh, you still have a t one tape in your library of so-and-so. Khalas, you are an innovator. We told you to get rid of his tapes. We told you to burn his books. We told you this. Oh, you don't have a clear position on so-and-so? You must be an innovator. No more salams until you correct yourself. We warned you. We warned you. We gave you uh, five minutes to think this over. We gave you the dalil. We made seven videos about you and you didn't correct yourself. May Allah help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This destroys the dawah. The people are in need of it and are in need of us to teach them. Teach them Allah's book and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are in need of those who will guide them to this truth and to this good. They are in need of the one who will come to them with Sahih al-Tarheeb by Shaykh al-Albani, Riyadh Salihin, Bukhari, and so on. In order to teach the people the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah increase you in goodness. This brings the hearts together. Be careful, O gatherer. Uh, be, care be careful, O gathering of believers. I also advise to safeguard seeking knowledge, and I mean by this serious knowledge seeking. It is inadequate for a person to come to a lesson or a conference for a day or two. No, everyone should seek knowledge via lessons, audios, books, sitting amongst uh, ourselves and learning. We should read the books of the people of knowledge, and this can be easy based upon your own knowledge. Find that which suits you. Everyone should always be searching for knowledge. Not just once a week if someone has the virtue of time. The basis has to be knowledge and learning. I finally advise you all to have taqwa of Allah openly and secretly. I just want to stop on that last point the Shaykh made. Half of Allah Ta'ala, which is very important, the importance of seeking knowledge. Because by Allah, the more time you seek knowledge, the less time you're going to have to spend on other people's mistakes. That's just the reality. And the more time you ta'amma those I thought of the Salaf, the less time you're going to have to look for somebody else's mistakes. You'll be too busy with your own. You'll be too busy with your own akhtha because we have them. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata tawabun. All the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent. We're busy. We're busy with our own mistakes. Even I hate myself to take out time to have to do, to speak about something like Yasir Qadi, or speak about someone like Nu'man Ali Khan, or to speak about somebody like uh, uh, the other one uh, who makes Ta'wil of the Hadith, um, who talks about the New World Order. I, I don't, Imran Hussein, I don't like that. I don't like that. They're Muslim. But when it becomes necessary to speak about uh, Ahl Bidah, or someone making some serious mistakes, and who's against, who goes either against or who's just totally differing and astray from the madhab of the Salaf, then sometimes it becomes necessary. If you're Ahlan Fadalik, if you, if you have the, the ability to do so, and, you, and if you're right, right for that. Ahabatifillah, busying ourselves with Talib al Ilm is, is of the utmost importance. And the ulama got there to their station, min fadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by seeking knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So that fiqh fideen, you're not going to get that if you spend that on the people. And you won't be able to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and memorize more Qur'an if you're memorizing the statements and mistakes of your brothers and you're doing detailed research in those matters. If you have the ability, if you're of those people, then that's something different. But that still doesn't mean all your time should be spent on this. And I'll end with this. There was something beautiful. I was listening to a very nice tape of uh, Sheikh uh, Falah Ismail, one of the mashayikh, senior mashayikh in Kuwait, Hafizullah Ta'ala. And he was talking about uh, another one of our mashayikh who was refuting him. He's refuting him and has refuted him like five times, five different uh, uh, 
on five different occasions or five a series of, of lectures refuting the Sheikh. And the Sheikh said, Wallahi, Ikhwan. He said, I don't have time to read that. I don't have time to read what, what, his, what he's uh, talking about even because if I spent my time busying myself with that, I, I wouldn't even be able to busy myself with the Quran because I'd be so busy with his next rud, his next refutation of me, his next refutation of me, showing us that a habitifillah, that that isn't the most, uh, the most important affair in our religion. It's a part of our deen. It's very important to preserve the sunnah. But for you and I, the, the lay people, and the beginning students of knowledge and so forth, we don't need to be involved in that. Leave those major matters and those major discord between the big students of knowledge and the mashayikh, the ulama. And especially the ulama, even I don't hear anybody say leave it between the students of knowledge. But many of the students of knowledge, they think they're ahlan fanatic as well. May Allah forgive us and them and guide us in them. So alhamdulillah, I just want to leave with that. It was a very beneficial treatise from the Shaykh. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafi does can tayyibu al mutaqabilin. Anything that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything that was incorrect was from myself and the shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.